Hey everybody, this is Phoenix Down, and welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy VI. In the last episode, we escaped from Kefka over at Figaro Castle, then made our way down here to the entrance to South Figaro. Yeah, it's going to be a bit of an easier episode today. We're going to explore the town, you know, upgrade our equipment, check out, maybe we'll find some treasure lying around, get some intel on what to do next on our way to the Returner's Hideout. So let's enter South Figaro, and oh, that guy down there is in a hurry to get someplace. Eh, we'll worry about him later. Anyway, there are a lot of treasures hidden on the, uh, the outdoor map of South Figaro, actually in South Figaro in general. But for the most part, I'm not going to be getting any of the, any of the treasure that is on the outside. Like, uh, there's a tonic in one of these barrels here, but that'll become something better about maybe halfway, two-thirds into the game. We'll end up having to come back to South Figaro eventually anyway. And that will upgrade into some better stuff. Just about everything you can find on the outskirts of town, on the outside, will uh, upgrade into something better. So yeah, like there's a tonic in that barrel over here. The second uh, crate over here, this has a green cherry. It's for the curing the imp status. It's a status unique to Final Fantasy VI. They don't bring it back in any other game, and it hasn't been used prior. There's no piggy or toad status in this game. So they do imp. It's also more common, well, I don't know if it's commonly known, but I know in Japan it's actually the Kappa status, which, you know, the Kappa is like this duckish water monster thing that's in their mythology. So you turn into that, it basically lowers your stats, but there's like special equipment that only the imps or Kappas can equip. We won't be dealing with that for quite some time, if at all, actually. So we'll worry about that another time. Anyway, in this crate over here we have a soft. This will become something better later on as well. Down here, that crate and barrel, these have like, I believe it's like a tonic and an antidote. I, I might have gotten them mixed up, but it's about that. And those will upgrade as well. So let's just wander around. We got a boat up down here. Wonder if we could sh ship off? Nope, never mind. The ship's not going anywhere. We'll worry about that later. It's nice to know that it's there. What does this old guy have to say? Okay, well, he's got his back turned to us, but anyway, beyond Mount Colts, you'll find the Sibyl Mountain Range. Okay, I believe that might be where the Returner hideout is. I passed up on a couple people over this way, so I might as well talk to him here. Hey, what is with these people not talking to me while facing me? Alright, well, we'll be able to upgrade our equipment around here. Okay, there we go. This, poli this guy was uh, moonwalking away from me, but he's very polite. There's a little girl running around, but now uh, whatever. I'll worry about her later. All right, let's enter the cafe. Yeah, they actually changed the graphic of the sign to cafe. It's actually like pub or something in other translations. Ooh, we got different music. Just strumming away. What do you guys have to say? Come on. Not, I, <laughs> this is like the third person that's talking to me while looking away. Duncan's students have no peers. I don't know who Duncan is or what they do. Are they like scholars? And we got a creepy guy at the counter. And the Empire's been invading one town after the next. We're not safe here. Well, where are you safe then? Don't worry, the king's here. He'll take care of things. Duncan made his son Vargas practice a strict martial arts lifestyle. And Vargas resented it. Okay, so, uh... Duncan's a martial artist. Okay, that's cool. And Vargas is apparently his son and also knows stuff. And we have this guy and a, this uh, ninja guy and his dog. And he's keeping his back to us as well. At the very least, you could give me a response. Come on, man. Stand back. He seems vaguely familiar. Wait a minute. What if... And the screen fades to black. He owes allegiance to no one, and will do anything for money. He comes and goes like the wind. So he's like Bart? He's Shadow! We can rename him if we like, but... Actually, this... I've been meaning to mention this, like, the last, like, few episodes ago. Like, when we first named Terra and everything. Some of the characters in Final Fantasy VI for the US version had their names changed. Shadow, I don't believe, is one of them, but... Like, Terra's original Japanese name was Tina. I meant to make a note of that before, but I, it kind of slipped my mind at the time. And the same with Sabin, uh, Edgar's twin brother. His actual Japanese name is Mash. So, uh, that I don't know what I, how I would think about that name if that had stayed in the English version. 
But anyway, so yeah, some of the names changed. Some of them just, I don't know why, Woolsey made a call and personal judgment kind of thing. And other cases later on, it'll be for like, you know, character limitations, because you can only have six letters in a name for a character in this game. And there'll be characters later on whose Japanese names spelled out in English would be, you know, it would exceed that limit. But anyway, we have Shadow here. That Shadow, he'd slit his mama's throat for a nickel. I love that line and I cannot believe it made it through the censors that Nint Nintendo had back in the day. Better steer clear of him, I guess. You know, I find it uh, odd, you know, in hindsight. Well, now that I'm thinking about it, why is it that Edgar is the one who knows who Shadow is? The, you know, the King of Figaro, you know, the Master of Machinery and whatnot. Why would he know who this mysterious underworld supposed killer is? And Locke, the thief, I mean treasure hunter that's kind of traveled the world over, searching for relics of the past and all that, and he's totally clueless. I feel like those rules should have been reversed for this one. And he's ignoring us again. Let's talk to the dog. Leave us. The dog eats strangers. Okay. And you can't talk to this old guy. He's behind the counter. He's out of our reach. And we still got the strumming shadow theme. There's nothing in the pot there. We got this guy here. Out of the way! I gotta get this cider over to the old man. That's my job. Now scram! Okay, this guy's rude. But yeah, if you follow this guy... You get kind of a, it's a little bit of uh, foreshadowing in a sense. It becomes relevant much later anyway. We lose track of him. If you exit down here, you can actually follow his path to where he needs to go. But you know what? Uh, it's not that important. I'll, I'll go over that when the time comes. But just know that if you follow that guy around, the, you'll uh, learn uh, his route, I guess, to uh, delivering a cider. Okay, let's lay in the bed of this guy. The Empire attacked Figaro Castle. Now we'll all be drawn into the battle. Okay, well that wasn't what I was expecting for Pillow Talk, but anyway, whatever. Anyway, this is the inn. There's absolutely no reason to use this inn, ever, really. So I'll just pass up on that. So let's go down these stairs. And this is, uh, well, we got this uh, little gem icon behind the, the shop guy. This is a relic shop so if you equip relics you gain a variety of abilities like the, this guy is wearing shoes that doubles walking speed and he ran into a wall because he is stupid and now we're getting a brief tutorial yeah we get different abilities for equipping relics they're basically the same as accessories like in Final Fantasy 5 so if you equip sprint shoes your walking speed increases True Knight is like the Paladin job class in Final Fantasy IV where uh, you'll jump in the path of uh, enemy attacks when uh, your party members are in critical health. You know, the Dragoon Boots uh, will replace your fight command with jump, but that's only good if you have like a spear wielder like Edgar in the party, because otherwise you're just jumping in the air and you're landing on the enemy. I mean, it's good for avoiding attacks, but you don't do double damage if you don't have a spear equipped. And the gauntlet, it's like the uh, two-hand ability in uh, Final Fantasy V for the night job class. You uh, equip that, you take off your shield, you hold your sword in both hands, and I don't know why I'm making sword gripping gestures with my hands. You can't see that, but you double your attack power that way. So let's check out some relics. Let's see, we got sprint shoes. I am going to buy a pair of sprint shoes because I like walking faster. The goggles, they do nothing because, well... The darkness status, yeah, this protects against the darkness status, but the darkness status is bugged in this version of the game. It does not work at all. It makes no difference. It basically, the only thing it does is let you wear sunglasses at night. We have the star pendant. I actually am going to buy one of these, even though we'll probably find one soon enough. We got the jewel ring. This protects against dark, dark and petrify. I'll worry about that later in true night, but I don't care about that. I'm hanging on to the star pendant. The thing about relics is that you can actually, uh, in the menu after battles, you don't even have to use items to remove certain status ailments. You just have to uh, equip the right el the the I almost said element. I was watching a Chrono Cross Let's Play recently. If you equip the right relic 
to a person that has a status ailment, you can actually remove the status ailment by putting the relic on them. So that's a nice little feature there. You know, not everyone picks up on that. But anyway, I got those, so let's see, equip some relics. I'm gonna give the sprint shoes to, I guess I'll let Terra wear them. So anyone in the party has sprint shoes equipped? And we move faster, all right. So let's get going. Oh, here's that guy. I guess we can follow him after. I'm fast enough. I can beat you to your destination. I'm gonna take a shortcut. Ha ha ha. Anyway, we wait for him here. Come on, man. I'm faster than you. Yeah, he's going over to this house up here. But even if I enter the building first, he'd still beat me. So you come up this way. And you can see he's already here at the old man, and he's off work now, and he's telling us to get lost. So he's still rude. You know, and this guy does not like strangers, so you have to bring him cider, in quotations. And then he might talk to you, but we cannot do that yet. Maybe later. And he used, and this guy used to be a servant for the richest man in town. So that might be relevant too. All this stuff we need to remember for later. There's a lot of foreshadowing that you may not be picking up on right away. If you come over here to this bucket, you can pick up a tonic. Basically, for Fa for, the, for Sal Figaro, when it comes to finding items lying around, basically don't take just about anything you find outdoors, but if it's inside a house, it's fair game. I know, uh, rules to live by, right? Yes, yeah, Figaro's castle sank into the sand. No, I did not hear about that. It wasn't like I was there or anything. Oh, wait, that's the guy. <laughs> yeah, he walks back to the... Whatever. Anyway, here we have a weapon and armor shop. Fortunately, it's the same building here. This crate here, ha or crate barrel, has a tonic in it, but that'll become something better, again, about two-thirds of the way into the game. You know, if you if you play this game and you're watching this, don't, don't spoil it for... Don't post any spoilers in the comments. I don't want to ruin the experience for anybody that's new to the game. So anyway, we have the arsenal shop. So let's pick up some weapons. Now, uh, yeah, this is our first time buying weapons in this playthrough. If you look at the characters down there, basically, uh, if they're making the victory uh, arm flapping, trying to fly off the ground motions, that means that they can equip that item, that they're that it's compatible with them. And if there's uh, that little triangle underneath them, that means they're in the current party. The downward arrow means that the weapon is less powerful for them, that it's a downgrade from what they're uh, currently using, and the E there for, by lock means that that is what they currently have equipped. So you can check out some of this other stuff. You know, Terra has a Mithril knife equipped right now, and uh, it's an improvement over Locke's Dirk, but since we already have one on Terra, then we may as well keep it that way. Then we have a Mithril blade, uh, that's good for uh, I guess I could have equipped that on Terra or Locke when I gave uh, Edgar that uh, Mithril Pike that I stole from from uh, Mog back in Narsh. Oh well. I will get a Regal Cutlass. I know I have a tendency of calling it Regal, but it's Regal. I, you know, I mispronounce it on habit more than anything. I'm going to buy one of these. As you can see, Locke cannot equip this. So I'm going to buy that. I already have a Mithril Blade in my inventory, so I'll give that one to Locke. And if you missed it at Figaro Castle, you can buy a Noise Blaster and a Bio Blaster here. So, you know, we'll worry about that later. Yeah, there's nothing over there. And we have the Armor Shop. So let's see. What do we buy? I guess I could have given that buckler the lock last time. Oh, well. But we have Heavy Shields. Yeah, Terra has got the Mithril Shield equipped, so I'm going to buy two Heavy Shields. That'll do. And let's see, uh... Buy a plumed hat for everybody. You can get them later on, but by that point, they're not really, a, you know, there's better stuff to equip at by then. Terra will get a cotton robe, and I'll get a kung fu suit for luck. All right, we should be good there. So go into our inventory, our menus, go to equip, select a character. Now, if you want to manually choose what you want your party members to have, you can just, like, select it from this way. Or you can do optimum, and the game will pick for you out of what you've already got in your inventory. So, yeah, that's, you know, usually, more often than not, that's that's more convenient. All right, so we'll do the same for Locke there. Ooh, look at that. It's, like, changed pretty much everything in his 
inventory there. And we upgraded Terra. All right, now we're looking good. We're ready to tackle the dangers that lie ahead. So what else is there to do in South Figaro? Yeah, okay, Mount Colts is to the east. Good to know, good to know. We're gonna head over this way. Yeah, you don't have to worry, really worry about anything here, but over in this crate, or I keep calling them crates, this barrel, there's a warp stone that will, again, change it to something. That's arguably not as good because warp, st warp stones are not overly common at this point in the game, but I never use them anyway, so I'm just going to leave it be. Warp stones can basically allow you to flee successfully from a battle. And I don't remember for sure because I never use them, but it might let you escape from uh, dungeons as well, but that might just be like a storyline thing that happens later on. But let's check out this one house and then call it for uh, South Figaro. Has war really begun? I better return home. Yeah, that's right. You better get out of here. Actually, what are you doing here? I guess this is the maid. I never really put two and two together until, until recently. That must be the maid. Anyway, we got this little area here. And in this barrel, we have a phoenix down. This is the only item outside in Figaro, uh, South Figaro that will not change later on. So, yay, we got a phoenix down. That's nice. That's always nice. So let's explore a little bit more of the rich man's house, and then we'll call it for Figaro. There's a couple other places I'd like to stop by before we call it an episode, although this is kind of running longer than I expected. Chung chung, chung chung, magic tech armor! That kid likes his magic tech armor. My dad's very important. Why, not so long ago, he even dined with General Leo. I, uh, just made that up. Or shadow? That might be relevant. That little girl has a tendency to, like, spill beans on occasion. Oh, this guy must be the rich guy. He's dressed just like the schmucks outside. Attack from the east. That way. Hmm? Hey, what do you think you're doing? Barging in here while I'm trying to write a letter? Harumph! Oh, uh, sorry. Even a millionaire can be startled. That was a very curious letter you were writing. And there's always a draft in this room. That's a little clue. But yeah, I'm the king of Figaro, you know. You think you'd be a little bit more respectful. I mean, South Figaro, you pretty much have the same name as my castle. But anyway, if you go behind this bookshelf, there's a staircase. You don't have to come down here, but there's some good items down here to find. And a little bit of money. If you go straight down from this path, you know, where you can't see, and then walk down, you'll actually find a hidden staircase into the basement. And this guy is into some really freaky stuff. I wonder why there's a dungeon in his mansion. But in this box, we get a hyper wrist that increases your vigor, I believe. Like, I think that's, like, related to your strength or something. I don't really fully understand all the different stats in this game. And here we get running shoes. Not to be confused with the sprint shoes, the running shoes. I'm going to equip those on lock. They cast haste on a party member, which allows them to move faster in battle. It was, yeah, it raises vigor. Uh, I'm not, I guess I'll give that to Lock, sure, why not? Since he's going to be moving faster anyway, he theoretically will be attacking more often. But alright, let's get out of here. I'm going to ignore these two rooms. One of them has a save point, but I don't need that. Let's check out this uh, storage place. We got some treasure chests to tick, dig up here. We got 500 GP, 500 gil. And we got 1,000, ooh, nice. And over here, ooh, 1,500. All right, 2,000, 2,000, 2,000. Nuts. Oh, well. Yeah, that's pretty much it down here. I'm sure this room doesn't have any other significance. So let's get out of here. That's pretty much everything I wanted to cover in South Figaro. So there's one other place I want to stop at real quick before uh, calling it a day. And then, uh, well, I'll get into that later. But since we're just talking, you know, this is a... Uh, I haven't mentioned it in the series yet, but, you know, this year, 2014, is actually the year, the year that marks Final Fantasy VI's 20th anniversary. And coincidentally, this is totally, this was totally on accident, but, uh, but the day that I recorded the first episode of this LP was actually the exact same day as the original Japanese release date for Final Fantasy VI. And we got a Rhino Tar. Okay, I was talking about this guy last time. I want to try to steal from this guy. Hopefully he has uh, 
something interesting. Terra defend. And while we're doing this, let's mix. Let's mess around with some of uh, Edgar's tools. Let's do the noise blaster. This uh, does a rant. Well, not random. It inflicts the confusion status. And Locke is still not def not stealing. I was gonna say not defending, but no, that's what I wanted to do with Terra. Let's uh, confuse him again. And keep him from attacking us this way. If he's too busy beating himself up. And he casts a Mega Volt on himself, that's his specialty. But he gets healed by uh, lightning attacks. So uh, you guys just continue defending. And Locke, you try stealing again. This guy has a rare item I want to acquire from him. And he's still not successfully stealing. So come on, Locke. Oh wait, can I steal? And he stole a taunt, crap. That's not what I wanted. All right, blast this guy with fire. Auto crossbow. Yeah, magic is gonna be the key to winning the war, but right now the auto crossbow is just a little bit better. And he's still going, all right. There we go. So yeah, between episodes, I'm probably gonna have to try to get that. He has an item for a future party member that I would like to get. Anyway, what I was saying is I recorded the, the first episode of this LP when, uh, on the exact day that Final Fantasy VI was originally released in Japan back in 1994. So that was, that was a, that was pretty cool actually. That was a cool uh, coincidence. Anyway, we found this little house here. And one last note is that, uh, just the other day as of recording this, uh, Distant Worlds, music from Final Fantasy, announced a new show in Chicago that'll be happening in August, toward the end of August. And they're doing a tribute to Final Fantasy VI, so they'll be playing Dancing Mad, the final battle music. They'll be doing, like, Draco and Maria, the opera sequence. We'll get to that when we get to it. And, uh, a couple other tracks. Pretty much every track that they perform from Final Fantasy VI will probably be played with the possibility of some new music and I'm planning on going to that. I took time off work for it. The tickets aren't on sale yet. That happens next week, but I'm looking forward to checking that out. I was just at Distant Worlds in uh, Nashville, Tennessee, actually, visiting a friend of mine down there. And that was a good show, too. But it's hard to say no when, uh, when Final Fantasy VI is concerned. Anyway, that's enough about me. What's that smell? So yeah, this is a little hut that's just kind of around here. Flowers, his favorite, his who. And these, these dishes, they were his favorite. Yeah, favorite dishes. And this, his favorite tea. Okay, who are we talking about, Edgar? Anyway, we have a tonic in this uh, bucket. And if you want to, this is why I didn't bother with the inn. Because you can just sleep in these beds for free. Full HP NP restoration. So let's uh, let's try going somewhere. No. Seven. He was here. Ah, his twin brother was here. Okay, apparently. And apparently, uh, when he left Figaro Castle, he took his favorite dishes with him. Gotta have, man's gotta have his priorities. We got this old guy. What are you doing here? Exactly. What the. You know this guy? Which guy? Are you pointing at yourself like, yeah, there's this guy who looks just like me, just dressed a little bit shabbier, wears sweatpants, tank top. You know who he is? Of course. He left a couple of days ago after he heard Master Duncan was slain. And he headed into the mountains. Wait, Duncan was slain? His son Vargas is missing as well. I have a bad feeling about this. Oh boy. And yeah, you could try beating the old man out there, but that doesn't do any good. So that's an interesting uh, turn of events. So what happened between Duncan, Vargas, and Sabin? I guess we'll have to find that out next time on Let's Play Final Fantasy VI. And in between episodes, I am going to try to steal from the, the Rhino Tars and get the uh, weapon that I'm looking for. If I don't get it after so many tries, I'll just forget about it. It's not that big of a deal, but it will save you some money down the road because it's something you'll end up buying anyway. But anyway, this has been Phoenix Down, and I will see you guys next time.